and we want to grow next year, it's real easy to say 10,000 widgets at a, at a dollar a piece or $10,000. Well, if we want to grow 20%, then we can add a number, 20% to that. Bottom bu budgeting requires you to go back and look at the things that lead to that 10,000 more widgets. Because there's got to be a cost. There's got to be more people involved. There's got to be another machine involved. There has to be more freight involved. There has to be other things involved. And it's real easy to just bang, put a number on the top line and say, we're going to grow our sales to there. But if you don't come back to the expense side of the statement or the cost of goods side and estimate, because a lot of times you'll find that you need one more forklift. You can't do it with the existing forklifts if you look, study the way the forklift works. And if you don't do bottom-up budgeting, you're, you're going to have trouble meeting your goals and or you won't be profitable. I learned about dashboards and key, key indicators. And I want to talk about this tool, Big and Easy. I learned this at Ford Motor Company. I love this tool. I don't know where it came from because everybody said they didn't get it at business school. What most business owners do is they have a lot of ideas on how they're going to grow their business. And so we work on all of them. But some of them are more important to us than others. And we, intuitively we know that, but how do we figure out which ones are the most or the least important? And I, I encourage when we're working on an initiative, it, the initiative can be cutting expenses. How can we cut expenses? It can be how do we grow our sales? How do we get more customers? There's a, and, and just encourage everybody to bring their ideas because you want everybody to be bought in. It's such a powerful tool. Has anybody ever seen this grid before? One, two people. Good, so the rest of you will learn it. it. And you can use it in just about every facet of your business. And I love it because you can involve the other people in your organization. Typically, as bosses, we come out of the office and we say, okay, we're going to grow sales 20%. You get to work. And that's not a good plan because he's not bought in. How's he going to increase his sales 20%? So somebody, okay, so this is the size of the initiative, be it cutting expenses or growing sales or whatever. And you would size, for instance, if we're going to grow sales, we're going to make a determination that growing sales by a double-digit number is big, 10% or more. This would be just almost no growth. This would be very small growth. This is easy. This is difficult. Now, encompassed in easy and difficult are cost of capital, resources, third parties, people, and effort. So it's not just, is this easy to do? Somebody give me an initiative. Somebody wants to grow their sales, I'm sure. Tell me something. How do you want to grow your sales? So you want to get more business by utilizing social media? Is that what you're saying? We do social media. Okay. So you want to find more customers that will come need your product. Yes. Okay. Now, Give me a way you'd like to accomplish that. One way. Direct mail. Okay. okay? The results from doing a direct mail campaign to sign up customers, by the way, you're soliciting everybody in the room's input here, normally your team, but it could be these people just as well, because there's going to be somebody over here that did some direct mail for some type of product similar, and they're going to say, that sucks. That idea sucks. <laughs> so is the, is the opportunity here going to be big? Not so big or really pretty small. From your perspective, on direct mail, of course, direct mail is really expensive. And unless you can target the list pretty accurately and get their attention, it's not likely to get a really big result, would be my thought. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So we're not likely to get this kind of result, OK? We, uh, I'm going to give you, I'm not give you another one after this one. So let's say we can, this is initiative number one, to grow our social media business, and we've decided uh, on the scale of big to small, it's in the middle, probably not very big, could be actually smaller. Now, how hard is this going to be to do? We're going to have to hire some graphics people, think about the message of the mailer, get the list, and embodied in that initiative is the cost. 
because it's going to be fairly expensive. It's going to cost us 50 cents per piece to mail bulk mail to a list. I make the number up. That's including printing. If you want to mail 10,000, it's going to cost $5,000. Is that right? Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. So is this going to be easy or difficult? I don't think it's easy by any means, but it's probably not rocket science either. Where would you say it is? Okay. So this is initiative number one. There's where we think we might get our growth and how easy or hard it might be. Okay? Now I'm going to give you a different initiative. I'm going to make one up. We're going to do a Super Bowl commercial. Okay? Is the, is the, is the result likely to be big or small? Big. Here. Okay? Is it going to be easy or difficult? Oh, my God. <laughs> Forget how difficult it is. How about the money? What was it this year? 2.1 million for 30 seconds or something? I think we just ruled this initiative out for you, but, but just for, just for grins. So it's going to be small and it's going to be difficult. It's going to be here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be here. Somebody else give me another initiative. Another idea. No, I'm sorry. Another idea for her. Speaking engagements. You're going to try to get. Uh, engagements at conventions. You're going to go and talk to these people, these business people, about social media and why it's important and how you can help them. And hopefully, you're not going to be too self patronizing and, and uh, you're going to have good tips for these people in this meeting. Now, is the result likely to be big or small? You name the initiative, so I'll let you guess. Well, I would have said small, but I'm going to. But <laughs> now, here's the reason I think it's small, though is because you can only speak to so many people at one time. But it is very focused. You might have, if you could get into the right conventions with the right group, you, it could be big. How about we say here, halfway between here and here, okay? Now how hard, by the way, at Ford, we always said big and difficult. We never said big and hard. <laughs> Can't believe nobody in the room got that. I can't believe nobody in the room got that. I'm serious, it's a heart attack. We had to put difficult on the board. <laughs> so, uh, is this gonna be is this gonna be easy or or difficult? Well, we're gonna have to figure out how to let's assume you've got some speaking credentials. By the way, the best thing you could do would be write a book. Now you'll be instantly qualified and somebody will want to get you to come speak. Yeah, for her I'd say it's easy. Yeah, so you, but you've got to get to the right people at the convention, the meeting planners, this, that, and the other. And then, of course, you've got some travel expenses. The expenses are not huge, though, relatively speaking. I'm sorry? I got it. That one I got. Okay. Well, but let's, let's size it. So, so it sounds like it's easier than difficult. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, for And we already decided the size was here. So here's initiative number three. Okay, we're going to spend an hour at the board. We're going to have 10 employees all bring five ideas each in writing so they can't just bullshit us. Okay, by the time we get to the last guy, we've already done he, some of the ideas he brought, we've already done, obviously. We're going to be interested in everything that's in the big and easy quadrant. And that's what we're going to focus on. And we don't care about anything else. Absolutely. You want to cut expenses? How can we cut expenses? Have everybody bring ideas to how we can cut expenses. It's so, what I like about it is the way we can loop in our people and get everybody bought in. And it gets people really focused because, you know what, my friends in the venture capital world, as our mortgage banker would tell us, is ideas are really, really plentiful. And there is so much money in the world right now. Oh my God, the world is awash in money. Sitting, they can't find people to connect the dots. Am I right? They can't connect the deals with the money. People that can make things happen. That's what's so exciting. Use with employees and upper level internal uses to vet and prioritize initiatives. But use it with lower level employees. Use it with the warehouse employees to figure out how to cut expenses in the warehouse. A lot of those guys in the warehouse have ideas, and they, they love it because they're part of the process. They feel like you're looping them in. Cannot emphasize enough that owners are almost always in the dark. When we do our peer benchmarking group meetings, 
10 of us come to your business, we're all in the same business, two of us go to payables, two of us go to receivables, two go to the warehouse, two go to sales and marketing, two go to finance, you're not going to believe what we find. You're going to be in bad shape. You're going to be depressed because we're going to find all kinds of stuff you didn't know existed. And we're all experts because we're all own businesses just like yours. And it's always amazing that the, and, and we stop and interview employees. They say the darndest things if you just stop and talk to them. Oh, wait a minute, I went the wrong way here, didn't I? There's your picture of your slide. Aren't you tired of the grind? No matter how fast we go, it's not fast enough. And boy, that is so true. No matter how fast you go, it's still running you over. Planning in a vacuum doesn't give you any leverage. That's why you need all those other people helping you with this exercise I talked about over here. Peers, other sources, books, this meeting. You've got to have sales training. We hire salespeople and we think they know what to do. We don't mystery shop them. Who mystery shops their salespeople? You've got to mystery shop your You're not going to believe the stupid crap they're doing. I'm, I'm serious. You just won't believe it. We mystery, do you mystery shop your competitors? They're doing a lot of stupid crap too. And you can learn ideas from them that, that, that will help you. You've got to have word tracks. You don't have that. You don't have. Everybody doesn't have to say exactly the same thing because some people can do it without a word track, but they need word tracks, and they've got to assume the sale. Most salespeople just don't assume the sale. Were you going to pay with a credit card or cash? When do you want that delivered? There's a lot of ways you can assume the sale, and you can say it five times in the conversation. They don't assume the sale. You gotta train your managers, send them to those courses. They love it because they think you're the best boss in the world because you're giving them more training. It's not about compensation, although they're always gonna gripe when you don't pay them enough money. But they love thinking that you're invested in them. You gotta meet weekly with the select groups and you've gotta share the metrics. You get everybody on board, you pass out a handout that shows all the metrics and you don't, you don't have to pass out the sensitive ones. You may have net operating income on the sheet. You got to, and you have to have an agenda. Here's how I keep my agenda. It's on my iPhone. The agenda for last week's meeting is on my iPhone. This year, when I, this week, when I walk around, when I talk to people, when I think about things, I come up with things that I want to talk about in next week's meeting. I go to the iPhone and add it to the agenda. Next week, three minutes before the meeting, I open that item on my iPhone. I copy and paste it into a Word document. I put a date at the top and hand it out as this week's agenda. Next week, I do the same thing. I go back and take the things off that we cover. It takes three minutes a week to have an agenda for a meeting and it makes you look like a pro. You gotta get buy-in and consensus. This, this thing, I, this tool I told you will help a lot. And you gotta hold them accountable. Don't underestimate this. People, my girlfriend's not here so I can talk about her business, but she just has salespeople and they just, last month she had one that didn't sell a single thing for the whole month. And it's like, well, she'll do better next month. No, it doesn't work like that. I'm sorry. You hire them in. You have milestones. If, if on the fourth or the fifth or the sixth or the seventh week they haven't done something, if they're supposed to sell 20 a month, can they sell two by the end of the first month? If they can't sell two by the end of the first month, guess what you do with them? You fire them. But you, you tell them right up front, if you can sell the 20, you're going to make $160,000 a year. And if you don't sell the two, I'm going to fire you at the end of the first month. They get it. It's okay. You give them a big salary and a small commission and they're not going to perform. In the auto salvage business, of course, they're big public companies now. The one I sold to is a $3 billion company, but they're all straight commission. Straight commission, no salaries. Surround yourself with folks that are smarter than you or that can do the things you can't, shouldn't, or won't. I didn't like accounting, so I hired smart financial people. You've got to have three different kinds of planning. Financial plans, and when you build that spreadsheet with that expense statement, remember I talked about bottom-up planning? Well, this many employees times this much per employee equals the labor on this line. That's bottom-up planning, not just taking the salaries and increasing them by 10% or 6% or whatever number you need. And what does that mean? You've got to have operating plans. 
So if you're going to have six employees or 12 employees or 136 employees, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have 116 in January and you need 124 in February and 136 in March. What is that? And all that ties right to the spreadsheet that's building your P&L for the whole year. If you can't do it, get somebody in your company to do it for you. It's okay. And you need to analyze your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. It's called a SWOT analysis. People do financial planning. I know in the early years I did it, and I said, those damn bankers, I hate those. I hate those guys. And after you put, do the financial plan, you put it in a drawer. That's absolutely not the way to do a financial plan. You need to do a financial plan based on metrics. It needs to be by the month, and every month you need to get it out and compare what you did versus what you said you were going to do, and then figure out how you're going to get back on track. We talked about bottom-up planning. Make sure it ties to the operating metrics. And then you have, to, you have to apply different lines to that to the people that are accountable for it. Bridge planning. Our investment banker guy will get a kick out of this. Because when we bought the, the, the division back from Ford Motor Company, it was losing a million dollars a month. A million dollars a month. You can't borrow money when you borrow. We had an asset-based lender. Asset-based lenders don't even care. They hope you don't pay. They're going to loan you 30 cents on every dollar and hope you don't make it because they want all your trucks. There was 168 trucks. You know, 168 trucks are worth some coins. So we borrowed $8 million from an asset-based lender. But the equity group, which was out of Dallas, here's, here's where the sales and profits are, $120 million, with a million dollars, $10 million a month, with a million dollars a loss a month. They want to know how we're going to get to $500,000 a month in profit. Okay, which would be 5%. It's not even optimum, but it's, it's a, a pretty big swing from a million negative to 500 positive. So we had to build this spreadsheet with all the lines that represented it, every initiative we were going to do to change that. It's called a bridge plan. It's the bridge on how you're going to get from here to here. And everybody on, on the team had to take as many lines as they were accountable for. You're in charge of sales? Fine. How much are you going to grow sales? We want to know, the, put it on that line right there. By month, by the way, for next year. And we want to know how you're going to grow sales, okay? The next line on the spreadsheet says you're going to sell more blue widgets, and you're going to sell more red widgets, and you're going to sell more yellow widgets. And by the way, black widgets don't sell, so they're going to be going down every month all the way across. This is a huge spreadsheet, and your name is on that line. Your name is on that line. Somebody else's name is on the line for how we're going to reduce expenses for pallets because our pallets expense is this much, and we know we, we can do it for less. Here's your goal for every single month. And the, the totals on the bottom of that sheet need to be about three times what you're hoping to hit because a third of you, two-thirds of you, aren't going to make it. And that doesn't mean you're a bad person because you may make it the next month, and so we add products, add services, cut expenses, this whole big spreadsheet. You have to have a bridge plan. What a great idea for y'all's businesses, though. When you say you're going to grow sales by 10% next year, how are you going to grow sales by 10% next year? And who's going to be accountable for every line on the spreadsheet? And you want to know the number by month. Because you don't want to wait till the end of the year and then everybody's coffee be called and talk about how you're the, the biggest, uh, the biggest, uh, turd on crap island or the tallest midget okay you know you didn't make it you didn't make it and you don't want to wait 12 months if you didn't make it the second month then let's figure out why you didn't make it the second month did you just overestimate or did you do something wrong so you need a bridge plan your bridge plan is very helped by this project over here where you get other people below you to say what they're going to do Denial. One of my partners brought this. It isn't a river in Egypt. Stop procrastinating and start planning. I'm going to give you, I'll break up just a little bit. I'm going to give you some of the, the book is illustrated by Gayan Wilson, who has drawn for Playboy and New Yorker magazine for 50 years. And when you see some of the drawings, you'll recognize them because he does monsters and faces and eyes. 
Normally I would ask y'all to tell me what these are, but since we're not, since we're rushing on. You know what, sometimes, you, did you ever say something you wish you hadn't said? It's so hard to put the toothpaste back in the tube. So hard. So I sent him the sayings. He chose which ones he was going to illustrate, and then he drew the pictures. On the left, Coca-Cola did this. Never change the dog food without talking to the dog. <laughs> you know, they changed Coke. Remember when they changed Coke and didn't really sample people well enough? It was a major mistake. The one on the right is one of my favorites. It's nails called Nails in the 2 by 4 The saying is in the book. You know, the first time you have a problem employee, you put your arm around their shoulder and you counsel them just a little bit. The second time you hit them with a 2 by 4 you know what you do next? You put nails in the 2 by 4 I love this one. Everybody here has done it. It is so bad, though. And you know what? After we bought the subsidiary back from Ford, we had to lay off 300 people in 60 days. And I knew a lot of these people personally. We had 1,000 people. Everybody's like, Ron, am I going to keep my job? Am I, gonna... I can't tell. I couldn't tell them. I just say, you know what? We're still working on that. So, you know, I, I always say we love to tell the truth, and it's always the right thing to do. But sometimes you just can't quite tell that yet. And in the back rooms, when you owners meet, that's called watching the sausage being made. Because, you know, if we saw what went in sausage, we would never eat it again. There's a lot of bad things that happen in the back rooms of the board meetings. It's called watching the sausage being made. Look how this freaked out this guy is over here. This is called mouse milking. You don't get very big results when you milk a mouse. <laughs> that's, that's this one. That's the Super Bowl commercial. Y'all know what that one is. Putting lipstick on a pig. Oh, I love this one. It's one of my, look at the trepidation in this, these people. This one's eyes. It's called a leg sniff. Y'all did it just as soon as I came in the room. You looked at me and said, you know what? He might be okay. We don't know yet. I don't know. Maybe he's going to be okay. Every, when we meet each other, when we hire people, when we fire people, when we meet people in the cafeteria, we always do a leg sniff. Dog